it is here. Amen. 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 We can just say, Amen.
have one more song um, to worship before we get into the message of the day. Um, or to into the hum humanities. The song says, God is kind to me. Jesus is kind to me. He takes me from here to there. Um, and when you take a look back at your life, you'll see how God has pulled you out of the miry clay a number of times. Um, they say hindsight is twenty twenty. When you're in the storm, you don't see what's happening. And in those moments, you really need to trust that God will be kind to you, that he'll take you from where you are to where you need to be. But what's most important, that he does it in his timing. And I think that's one of the things that I know I struggle with the most, to say, okay, I know at some point there's going to be deliverance, or I'm going to see what you're doing, but right now I can't. So how do I keep trusting mm. that you love me, that you're still kind to me, that you still consider me? You know, so we'll just sing a song that celebrates that God is kind to us, that he takes us from here to there. And if you're not at that point where you can see that he's taking you, please sing along and trust that he will deliver you. Okay. Um, and it says... Um, Just 
Greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Lift up Christ. Amen. Tell the world, indeed, God is good. This song just made me cry. It just, you know, I just remembered where the Lord took me from. I'm just emotional. God is good, my brothers and sisters. We want to thank the Lord. You know, it's amazing. We left this place almost midnight. But here we are again. If the devil thought he was going to keep us down, we are up. We are up and the Lord has brought us down. Ah, what do we say to this praise team? Allow me just to say, these are our daughters. I actually know them. I can even tell you the one in a white dress. I used to pick her from crash, from nursery school. And here she is standing singing. What do we say to that? Thank you so much. I just want you to introduce yourself. Just tell us your names. We don't want just to call you the praise team. We want to know your names. Please tell us your names before we start. One, two. Morning, everybody. Um, so this doesn't usually happen. Um, I think also because we're content in being known as the praise team. Um, <laughs> and one of the reasons uh, when we pray and we prepare to come here is that um, self must fall away and God must be praised. Amen. You know, Amen. I think it's very important because Amen. it can be exciting to see all these beautiful faces and yes. see people that you haven't seen in years and, you know, and want to connect and make it about you, but it's not about us. Um, but as requested, we'll introduce Amen. who we are. Okay. Um, Lindile Nomo. Amen. Um, I am Onolutan Donkosi. Amen. My name is Anele Nomo. Yes, Lindile is my sister. Yes. And my name is Mbalimoto. And then what do we say to the praise team? Dina, we will not forget you. We won't forget you there, please. You all know Dina. Hey, we all know Dina. We just don't know what to say about you. May God just bless your ministry. Please introduce yourselves there, your names. On drums, we've got Dennis Buikanyo. Amen. And the man who plays guitar like an old man, Ukoiki. And that's my son of whom I'm well pleased to say. <laughs> and I am who you said I am. Oh, okay. <laughs> amen, amen. What do we say to the band? Amen. Thank you all for this beautiful music and for being on time even today. So without wasting time, we are now moving on. Um, we are, maybe you, you can be seated, you can be comfortable because we're going to have a prayer garden as well. So we are going to start with a word of prayer. Um, I'm going to just ask our sister to please come forward. She's going to run the prayer garden. If you notice, we are going to be having a prayer garden every time before we start because we are saying more prayer, more power. So that's why prayer is what we are also emphasizing. So there will be a prayer garden every time before we start. After that, the guys at the back, you know what to do. I don't want to say much. Let the things just roll and God is present in this place. Amen. Happy Sabbath, women of faith. I would like to greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, I am that person who makes a bit of noise before she starts preaching. I'm a chorus person. I'm a noise maker. They know me in Pumalang. And when the praise and worship started singing this last chorus, I said, God, you are talking to me. My sisters, allow me to unveil an invitation which has been prepared by our Savior himself. An invitation full of love, tenderness, mercy, and care. 
an invite into the confession garden. Isaiah 1 verse 18 says, Come now, let us reason together, said the Lord. Though your sins be like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though as crimson, they shall be as wool. May the wonderful Lord bless the sharing of his word. My sisters, the praise and worship says, don't mind my Zulu. I'm trying my best. I, as she was saying, I saw myself being lifted from the ground. God taking me high. I am Antawile Pirimnisi. I was, this is my second marriage. My second marriage. I've learned to give testimonies of things I have lived things I have seen. I don't want to give a testimony, your testimony. I want to give my testimony because it shows me where I'm coming from with my Savior. It is said here that even if your sins are, are as red as scarlet, my sisters, uh, I, I believe I was supposed to be a teacher. But I'm not patient enough. What color is this? Red. Are you sure? All right. What color is this? Okay, blue, green, yes. That's what I want to talk about. When I lifted a red shoe, you said red. The person who is at the, at the door said red. And when I lifted the neon green, we gave, we gave a lot of colors. That's what is happening with our lives. When I was in my first marriage, I felt that, God, I am losing it. You know, with these marriages, sometimes our men, the people who love, they take us down to nothing. They put us in sin, and we say, yes, we are getting in. That's what happened. In my first marriage, I learned to hate. Are we together? In my first marriage, I felt that, no, man, this is too heavy for me. I must consult. A witchcraft, a sangoma, a, a prophet, because it was too heavy. My sisters, God said, my child, this is not your marriage. This is not your marriage. There is a sister who is crying every day. There is a sister who does not know where to go. Oh, my sister, go to the cross and cry it out. That's what we are going to do today. We are going to the cross. We are getting into the confession room. And we are going to cry it out today. We are going to tell God everything, every sin, everything. And he's going to hear us because he promises. My sisters, your sins might be as red as scarlet. But hey, do not be moved. Stay there. Hold on. He is faithful. He is faithful. When you cry to him, he will hear you. You know, we have done it all, women of God. We have lied. We have cheated. We have stolen. What is it that I can mention that we haven't done? But God is saying, come. Come now. Let us reason. When you hear a father saying, let us reason, there is still a good relationship. Hallelujah. So, Today, you are going to utilize that. That relationship, which is there between you and the Savior, is going to be seen today. My sister, when you thought that all is finished and done with, God said, no, you are going to the retreat. I'm going to meet you at the retreat. And that's where we are now. We are going to have a prayer. And this prayer is going to be a personal prayer of Confession. My sisters, we serve a God who hears us. He listens. He's waiting for you to name it or to mention your sins one by one. He's listening. Cry it out, my sister. Uh, I'm going to ask each and every one of us to kneel where we are 
as you get into prayer. It's your time with God. Cry it out, my sister. Name your sins one by one. He's waiting. He is waiting. Let us pray. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I believe we have taken it all to Christ. My sisters, our God is so faithful. He says in 1 John 1 verse 9, if you confess your sins, he is faithful. So I'm going to change it. I am going to say, we have confessed our sins. We know you are faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. We save a God who is faithful. 
he is a promise maker. He is saying he's going to cleanse us. And he is a promise keeper. And he is a promise fulfiller. What a God we save. What a God we save. My sisters, don't allow anyone to drag you down. You have said it all. You have told God everything. Hey, be a free woman. Be a free woman. The way you were walking when you came in is going to be different. The way you were talking when you came in is going to be different. Because he says he's, he clean, he's going to clean us from what? Our unrighteousness. We are all clean. We are all clean and ready to save today. May the wonderful Lord bless you in this Sabbath. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, our God and Savior, we have mentioned all our sins one by one, Father. And you have promised that you are going to cleanse us. We know you have already done that, Father. Oh, Jehovah, we are now a new creation, a new people. Jehovah, be with us as we are going to get into the communities, as we are going to get into the world. Oh, Father, may people not see the old us, but see the new you, Jehovah. We thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I greet you all in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. amen. I'm just um, doing a short explanation. As we see in our programs, every session, there is something called a prayer garden. But when you will arrive, you will find out what the theme of the garden is. Remember yesterday we had the praise garden. Now we are having the confession garden. I will not tell you what the next gardens are. It will be a surprise to you. But keep on preparing your soul for whatever the prayer gardens are about. Now I want to tell you about the ladies that we have picked here. They are like uh, what Evangelist Nokanyo was saying last night. That sometimes when you go through the fire, God will say, I'm already there. The women who are doing these prayer gardens are your prayer warriors who have been praying before you even arrived here. They were already there. Um, these women prayed in this very hall before you sat, not only a week ago, but a month ago already. And then another thing that you'd realized that yesterday, before the, when the praise garden was presented, there were a group of ladies standing in front here. They were representing that they are standing in the gap for each and every one of you. And this, now we have modified our prayer warriors that every prayer garden, they'll be placed and they will stand or kneel amongst each section. I think we have six rows right now, or six sections. And when they kneel in front, now they are not even praying for themselves. They are interceding for you. We want our, you know, you know in the... In the olden days, in the Old Testament, you know, the sacrifice, you'd literally see it in booze or whatever. You know, they, they would be at the type and the anti-type. But sometimes we literally need to show you that we are praying for you. For it to sink and say, Yazim, this is what is happening. We're not just saying it figuratively or whatever. See it. We are interceding for you. Burdens are going to be lifted here. Chains are going to be broken. We are not playing church this weekend. Thank you. And one last announcement from our prayer band. This beautiful box here is our prayer request box. However, we have stationed it not here. Ne? We have stationed it. We see we have that photo booth, the one with the black background. There is a beautiful table just next to it, and you will see that purple box. So that, you know, it, you, when, you, when you put it, you can put it discreetly. Ha, quickly. <laughs> so that's why we have put it strategically there. Put your prayer requests. We will be interceding for you. Thank you.
Pastor Candy Swartz serves the Motherwell District made up of 13 churches in Kabecha. Pastor Swartz is a grandmother to six grandchildren, four girls and two boys, and a mother to six grown children. She has co-authored a book entitled Theatre of Grace, whose intention is nurturing and developing young girls in a deprived rural location. She is passionate about community building, touching lives and bringing hope to the downcast. Pastor Swartz is an ardent prayer warrior. She was the first woman pastor in the Southern Africa Indian Ocean Division of the Seventh-day Adventist Church to be commissioned in November 2015. This event broke a glass ceiling that was kept intact in Africa for years. It affirmed the work of women pastors and gave recognition for their efforts and paved the way for many female pastors who have been subsequently bestowed with this ministerial credential. Despite all the challenges of ministry and opposition, she has stayed on the forefront of the work of the gospel and serves her master tirelessly. She responded to a call to ministry at the ripe age of 46 and is an alumnus of Haldeberg College, where she completed her studies and holds a BA in Theological Studies. There's a special request for this song. You are going to love it. Um, director, please, it's the request from the preacher. So we'll just go straight to it to save time.
Another one says, this is a prayer. This is a prayer. This is a prayer. Lizali say it dingala. Hallelujah. You know, when, when you approach the throne, I saw it with Moses. You, you are slow in progressing towards it. You are not sure even of your steps if they will ultimately take you there. You, you negotiate your way. And Moses sees a burning bush. And as he approaches, it is like he is looking at something that is trying to protrude behind another object. He is careful. And when he comes in a good distance, careful proximity, to the burning bush, you see, the Lord starts to speak. And that stops Moses short. And he did not speak many words, and Moses falls down. He falls flat down. This is a prayer written by the son of the soil, Tiosoka who went overseas to better not just his life, but to better his life with the intention of returning and, you know, lifting his community, his African community, to better levels. And when he returns, he discovers life has gone worse than when he left. And he scripted this prayer, you know, grappling with the Lord, asking the Lord to please fulfill his will for his people by first forgiving his people, cleansing our hearts, finding a way to get into our hearts so that we can hear him when first he knocks with that gently knock that he usually gives. Oh, beloved, I feel that this weekend we have been brought together so that we can appear before this burning bush. And do that, we need to be careful. Not that we need to be told that. We need to experience it by ourselves personally so that when we approach God, we realize this is a great and mighty God we are coming before. I greet you, friends. I greet you, sisters, all in the most wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This weekend, we have come together to grapple with just one text. Found in the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, and the verse is 19. And it reads like this. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. This is the text we are trying to tease. The text whose words we are trying to root out. You know, this is the text whose meaning we are trying to discover this weekend. And it comes from three different women coming from three different angles of the world. But Lord, I want to, to believe 
that the Lord has so filled us with himself that ultimately, even if we think we will not be able to, we will bring on the table what he means by these words. Well, the title of the short message I've brought with this morning is Remember and Forget. A paradox. Remember and forget. I wish to invite you to read just a few verses from this same chapter, verse 14, and then we skip to verses 16, 17, 18, and 19. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake I have sent to Babylon and have brought down all their nobles and the Chaldeans, whose cry is in the sheets. Verse 16. Thus says the Lord, which makes a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, which brings forth the chariot and the horse, the army and the power, they shall they shall lie down together. They shall not rise. They are extinct. They are quenched as tow. Remember. Remember. Remember you, not the former things. Neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Let the Lord bless the reading of his word now and forevermore. Amen. Shall we bow our heads? As we pray, Malusuetu Olungleyo Chikona Manda. I believe we have come here to lay ourselves before your feet, the feet of grace, the feet of your throne, dear Lord Jesus. And therefore, Father, find us, find each one of us individually so that we not only convert from what we were, but Father, we are made new. We want to thank you, Lord. We want to praise you, Father, all in Jesus' holy name. Amen. The book of Isaiah, made up of 66 chapters altogether, uh, is where we find the chapter we are about this weekend, chapter 43, which stands right in the middle of the segments breaking the book of Isaiah. And the middle part where we discover chapter 43 is all about salvation, which follows quickly after the steps of chapters 1 to 39, whose focus is God's judgment upon his own children. And of course, it is followed through by the last segment, chapters 56 to 66, which, you know, refocuses our lens towards the futuristic ideal 
which is eternal life. But I wish to implore us today to, you know, bring our focus back and let's concentrate on the middle of this book. And allow me to say forthrightly that this part reminds me of the cross of Jesus. Alone and tall and reaching out as well. Carrying salvation for God's lost people. Salvation. Salvation. That which we need now, presently. You see, Israelites at this juncture, as we read in this book, were in exile in Babylon. You see, when whilst they dwelt in their country in Jerusalem, they realized that they were surrounded by so much plenty. God pulled all stops to provide for Israel. He pulled all stops. There is nothing that he did not provide for them. As was the case, in fact, right at the beginning. For in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And when we check, we come to realize right at the end that he was actually putting together provisions for his children, Adam and Eve, so that when they ultimately land, they will not lack anything. And so was Israel provided for by the Lord, so that he will not lack. But Israel got so used to God's provisions that it seemed that they were not enough. They grew discontented. They started grumbling and in fact started looking away from the Lord and towards the nations that were neighbors with them. And they started seeing their lifestyle that was overflowing with idolatry. And I'm asking myself in my mind, if that is the case or that was the case with Adam and Eve, provided everything by the Lord, yet there, there grew in them a discontent that could not be explained. And, and, and in fact, we could stretch it even further back and, and look at Lucifer and how God provided for him. And he asked him, Utenikwes. Utenikwes. Okokba uwe. And beloved, <laughs> Lucifer in his makeup was made of the most precious stones, maybe some of which we have had never even heard of. He was glimmering, he was glistening, he was all that and more. Yet, discontent was found, was discovered in him. And so Lucifer uh, turned his back on God. And, and Adam and Eve, with all those provisions, turned their backs on God. Well, maybe Lucifer carried his arrogance until now. He has never changed. But Adam and Eve, after sinning, they realized their fault. They realized their loss, their big loss. 
they realized it. Even though the Bible tells us Adam kept hiding, he was not really hiding in his heart. He was yearning for God to find him. And allow me to say, dear friends, like, like, like Lucifer, like, like Adam and Eve, like, like Israel that now discovers herself in a place that was never her call in Babylon. Israel now finds herself looking down, mute, with nothing to say for herself. She realizes her need, her need of salvation, but she's not able to utter a word. She is not able because she realized how deeply and greatly she has sinned against her God. She did not have anything to say for herself. You see, in Babylon, the people of God were dry. They were parched. They were devoid of hope. If ever they knew hope before, they did not know how to explain it or how to make it up or how to make it come up or how to reach out in hope, for they were devoid of hope. They had gone dry like the desert. We have suffered as well. We have suffered as children of God. I, I, I don't think I can, I can, you know, explain it better than it was explained. How much we have suffered through the pandemic. But there's one thing that I've noticed, one other thing, most important I believe I have noticed about the pandemic, that it has discovered us. I'm not sure if we are hearing this. It has discovered us. Not only so, but it has also revealed us for who and what we are. Let, let, let me explain this further. You know, we, 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 we were crying here last night, crying about the people that we have lost in death. It, it, it could be, and in fact, it was intimated here last night that the possibility is that God allowed them to sleep knowing that they were in a better place uh, when they came at the point of death. They were better off than when they were still alive and we have been left behind. And we would think that we are better off by being still alive. Have you thought about the multitude of other ladies that would come and assemble with us in such conferences as we have come together here, but are now not among us, not because they are dead, but because when they would come out to fellowship with us, they came most probably seeking you know, comfort from their pain. Not knowing where the true and real comfort comes from. They were looking for someone, you know, to pat them at the back and make them feel better. They were looking for anything that was projecting towards them. They had not yet discovered who God is to them personally. Could it be maybe that even among us, as few as we are, there is
is one that has come here not truly knowing who God is to her. You see, this is what the pandemic has done to us. It has discovered us in that sense. And God is giving us another chance by opening up a chance for us to come together like this again. So that in his presence, we can bask upon him and get to know who he truly is. Not the God that we had, you know, created for ourselves in our minds. Not the God we, 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 we had modeled and fashioned uh, like an idol for ourselves, but a God that we can never truly and fully discover. Ellen White tells us when we come into eternity, you know, we will study about salvation unto eternity. Unto eternity. Unto eternity. You know, Israel finds herself in Babylon. You know, there they knew they were going to remain for 70 years. Imagine among them were old women and men. There were those that were mature, of, the, of a mature age. They put together mathematics and added to their years, then the 70 years, and they realized they will not make it back home. They will not make it back home. They were going to die in exile. And this kept sapping and sapping and taking and taking away from them. Like the desert that, you know, enwraps itself around you just to sap your essence, to take away anything of value and not merely leave the skeleton, but even it's away at your bones so that whomever comes along and sees, you know, your remaining bones will be just like dust. Oh, beloved, God is calling us. He is calling us like he turned around after proclaiming a judgment upon Israel. He turned around at, and offered himself as the savior to Israel. Hence we read from uh, verse 14 that the Lord was ready to save Israel and destroy their enemies in turn. And he goes further in verses 16 and 17 to remind Israel where he had taken them, having fallen off. During the era of Israel in the Egyptian uh, exile, when they were slaves in Egypt, he reminds them of his might and his acts of power whilst he came to deliver his children. You see, Israel, ngelo klesha batandwa. Israel, ngelo klesha had forgotten who she is. They no longer knew their God. They did not know how to worship. They had even forgotten about the former, their former generations, and how they stood before God. They had completely forgotten about that. They had even forgotten 
about themselves that they were the sons of Abraham who carried in him the promise of faith, the promise of eternity, the promise of generations. You see, whilst we look at Abraham as the father of generations, it could be that maybe we interpret that to mean that he has many sons that reach out and come to, to our era, to our end of history. You see, when we are told that Abraham is the father of generations, we are actually told that it is generations that not only end, you know, in his line, but it's generations that cross and crisscross across the ages and all over the world reaching to eternity. For when we will be received in heaven, we will be received as the generations of Abraham, the father of faith. The expectation is that we hold faith in God like a banner. Like we marched introducing ourselves here last night, we hold that banner of faith high, unapologetic and intentional. We hold it high and move and trudge forward. Do you, not, do you know what happened with Israel? As, as they were reminded by God and his acts of power in releasing Israel from Egypt, they would pray, for instance, in Babylon, looking towards Jerusalem, thinking to themselves that, you see, we know that the glory of the Lord is resident in Jerusalem. Where we are at, we are all alone. We only have ourselves to look up to. And they were looking over there in yearning, yearning to reach out and go and worship God. Listen to them crying as they were entering Babylon. By the rivers of Babylon, there they sat down and cried when they remembered Jerusalem. And they were taunted by the Babylonians, asking them to sing the songs of Zion, not realizing by asking for such songs, they were actually telling them to worship according to the way they know and they worship their God back in Jerusalem. And they knew when they would have been in Jerusalem, they would go to the temple to worship God. They would need to slaughter a lamb. They would need to slaughter a lamb as a sign that pointed them forward to Christ who would come in due course. You know, when, when they were asked to sing the songs of Jerusalem, you know, for them, it seemed as if God was laughing at them, that God also saying, what now? All are not there. Glory is left back in Jerusalem. You are alone now. What do you have to say for yourselves? What do you have to say for yourselves? Oh, please. the Israelites would look towards Jerusalem thinking that if only, you see, you see, between Jerusalem and Babylon, there was a huge desert, a place of dryness, a place, a dead place, a place where life would never thrive. A place when you entered, you were sure to die. Ask Hagar. 
ask Hagar what the desert does to one. It is not because she dared the desert, but it is because, you know, Sarah pushed her. Sarah pushed her and she did not have any other option. For, for that matter, where she was, it was not home. She had no other person that she knew. The only people she knew were back home in Egypt. But to get to Egypt, she had to travel through the desert. And as she entered the desert, most probably she started praying to her idols as she remembered home thinking that the gods of Egypt could carry her through back home, only to realize once she reached the middle of the desert, there was no turning back and there was no way forward as well. She knew that her life ends here and now. And she took her baby and put him a distance away from her so that she will not witness her baby die. Oh, Betunana, Betunana, God blesses us with beautiful, precious children. You know, blessings indeed. We nurture them. We develop them in the best way we know how. But along the way, when they grow up, they also make their own decisions and they veer off the road. They veer off the way that we had pointed to them. And beloved, all we live for is to eat tears day in and day out. Day in and day out. We sleep on tears. We awake from wet pillows. Praying. I remember, I remember a time. <laughs> I am a divorcee, by the way. I remember a time when my child, I don't know what had triggered this in her to throw herself into alcoholism. I remember a time when I noticed that she is gone. I don't think I will ever, ever get her back again. And you know what I did? Late at night, that day, I was preaching at church, in fact. And when we came out from church, as we just took the first turn walking back home, we saw her. Pop drunk. Pop drunk. She kept falling. And his friends, I didn't have words to say. It felt like I, I had a lump here. And tears were just rolling down my, my face. And the brethren that I was going with kept saying, don't look towards her. Look straight home. I, I couldn't even, I asked this question inside me. How do you look away from your child? How, how do you do that? Please, someone help me. How do you do that? I, I, I remember a mother whose child is a murderer, is a rapist. And the community decide to take justice in their own hands and tell themselves that today we are killing him. We don't want no murderers and rapists in our community. And what does the mother do? She comes. She comes running. 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 Running covers him with a blanket and throws herself 
upon him and tells the crowds, please first kill me before you get to him so that I don't see my child die in front of my eyes. This was the case with Hagar. She didn't want to see her child die in front of her, her eyes. She didn't want to look at that. It's an ugly sight to see, hey, maybe you think this is about mothers. God, God cried when he saw his own son being killed in front of him. He could have reached out and snuffed everyone around there. But because he knew the purpose of his son's death, which did not make the hurt and the pain any less, he decided to give him his back. And it was painful. And when he did that, the sun shut down. The moon receded. The earth shook for the God of heaven. The Almighty was moved, was in tears, was in tatters, all because he wanted to save you. He wanted to save me. He wanted to save us. He wanted to save us. He wanted to save us. I remember that evening at home, I saw my child lying out of her mind, in stupor, in fact, in our garage. For that's where her fr friends threw her. And in the evening, when she had come by, she stood again and took steps back to the taverns of Port Elizabeth. And I went to check her in the garage if she was still there, and I noticed she, she was gone. And I went into the house. I lay down on my bed. Uh, I was struggling. I did not know whether to lie on my right or on my left or on my back or, or, or on on my belly, you know, I, I just slipped down my bed trying to pray. And I remember myself saying, God, I am going out to find her. I am going out to find her. As I was stepping out, I was speaking to myself. And it was night already, Saturday evening. And it was never safe in Port Elizabeth to walk alone as a woman in the streets. And as I was going out of my house, I started saying, rather, Father, let her be hit by a car and die than what I have to deal with now. This is too much for me. Let her die. Lo, I did not check. There was somebody walking slowly behind me. It was a woman that lived directly in front of me who was a witch doctor. And she kept reaching out, Meluane, Meluane, neighbor, never utter those words again. Rather, pray for your child. And the reference of what I'm telling you, you will not know. It is you, yourself. You know I live in a big house alone. The only people that enter into my house are people that have come to as of me. But when I'm alone at home, I often hear a song flowing out of your house. A beautiful worship song. And you know, I would step out of my house, sneak into your yard, and lay my ear on your door and listen in. I've heard you sing a string of songs 
each one saying, this is my choice, and you would sing it. And thereafter, the one that chose it will explain the meaning of the song to them. And thereafter, you would share the word, and you were the one that led your family breaking bread. I heard you pray prayers that moved me. And I don't accept hearing you today giving your child on a platter to the devil. May I remind you, Melwan, it is the devil that kills us. This was a witch doctor preaching to me. And I, I couldn't do any better than to return back home. You know, disappointed in myself. Thinking about what God is thinking about me. If he could say, send a witch doctor to tell me things that I'm supposed to know. Beloved, Christ came to, to find us. And he's reminding us about Egypt and the mighty works he did in bringing Israel out of Egypt. That is why he says, remember. Remember the things that I've done for you, Olisa Kind. Remember the things. I mean, God is talking to you, to you, each one of us here. He is pointing us back to where he came and found us having fallen down and lifted us up and walked again into the future, his future with us, dragging alone, along because we were injured and in pain. And he thought rather that we walk in pain, but go and enter his eternity. Go and enter his eternity. This same God is the one that proclaims in verse 18, remember you not the former things. Remember you. Do not remember or forget the former king, the, the former kings. In fact, there's a a, 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 a phrase, a word, you know, that comes before this phrase, forget the former, the former things. Behold. You know, when that word is used theologically, it is a call from God to pay attention. Like he, he called Moses to attention. And instead of Moses you know, standing in attention, he fell down. For he could not contend standing before the glory of God. He realized it was God that was talking to him from this bush. That was burning without being consumed. Oh, beloved, beloved, God is telling us to forget, to not dwell on the former things. You see, he has done great things for me. And he tells me, forget the former things. Let me tell you another story. Just as an illustration. You know, I love my husband so much. I loved him to the point that I don't think I would ever be able to marry another person again. Not because I think I would be able to return and get married to him. Not, not, I'm, that's not what I'm saying. It's a, it's a confusion, though. I know what I'm saying. I loved him so well. And because of that, you know, I was vengeful in my heart towards him because I did not understand. Because I remember the last time he came to the house to, house to tell me that actually, I've decided to leave you. I am leaving you. I, am, I, I just want to, to have my own space. And I fell on his feet and I prayed and begged him like I would be begging the Lord. And I told him, you can do anything, anyhow, 
if only you could stay. Just stay. Don't go. Don't go away. And he left. Even asked him, why? Why have you chosen to leave me? He told me, it's because you are too good. I've not been able to interpret what that meant to date. And you know, know what? I, I lived with this vengefulness in me that when I thought about him, it would be as though my head was breaking with anger and, and vengefulness. But the Lord whispered in my ear, he said to me, Golisa, start praying for your husband. And I asked him, eh? Start, start praying for your husband. And I'm, I'm scared of the Lord. I do not want not to comply when he speaks. I, I, I went. I tried to kneel. And as I was going down, I remembered, remembered well, as you are kneeling, girl, you are going to pray for Mtutuzid. And I stood again, and the voice came, kneel down and pray. And I knelt down. And I started crying. Because, yeah, I don't know what it is that you are trying to make me do. It's difficult. I can't do this. I can't do this. And the voice came, keep doing it. Keep doing it. And that is how I started praying for my husband. Well, my ex-husband, I started praying for my husband to date. I'm still praying for him to date. And my only prayer is that the Lord ensures that at least whatever blunders he makes in his trajectory through life, he makes it to heaven. He makes it to heaven. And if you would know him now, today, what a prayer warrior. What a prayer warrior. And, you know, as if that was not enough, the Lord taught me uh, make a relationship with his wife. But, Lord, the things that you want me to do are difficult. They are not easy to do. How do I do that? And I, I hit a, a relationship that I cannot explain to you how it happened. To the extent that she would come over to my house and spend a good two weeks with me, sharing a bed with me, praying with me. Beloved, behold, behold, forget the former things. Forget, forget the former things. Forget the former things. God has got this. God has got this. God has got this. I am telling you now. God has got this. We are well covered. Under his hand and under his wing. We are well covered. We are well covered. As I recede, allow me to tell, to say our God is the God of new things. He is the God of new things. As we read in verse 19, I will do a new thing. I will change your hardiness. And I will soften your heart. I will help your faith. Or your unfaithfulness. I will help you. I will help you stand. Before kings. And emperors. Proclaiming my word. Without fear. 
I will give you a boldness that you have never known before. The Lord is calling us. Beloved, the Lord is calling us. Let's not associate him with our past. What has happened has happened. He is now making a new thing. He's making a new thing. Look at him, you know, enfolding or rather opening up his essence before Moses. His essence that we interpret and say, he said, I am who I am. But when you go and check the original language, you get to discover that this is a moving God we are talking about. And he says, Moses, tell them, I shall be whom I will be. He is a becoming God because the word became flesh. He's a moving God. He's not static. He's not unmoving. His wheels keep running, rolling and rolling and rolling going forward. Go read Ezekiel. When he saw the wheels within a wheel moving forward, it moved in all directions, carried by the four living creatures. For God, you know, represents us as humanity. Which is, which is shown by the front face of the living creature. He is the Lion of Judah. Which is shown by the significance of the lion on his right. He is a worker that heals us, which is signified by the bull on his left. He is the God Almighty, which is signified by the eagle at the back. This is my God, a mover. He is able to carry us. Forget the former things. Have, have, have you lost five people in your family and you want to come and testify about that before, before multitudes? Let me remind you, Job lost ten in one day, all at one, once. He lost ten and Job refused, refused to renege and move back with his faith. He rather stood at one place waiting for the Lord to find him. And the Lord found him. Beloved, it's a paradox. Let us remember the good things that the Lord has done for us in the past. But let not let us not be stuck on that. He is able to do new things. You see, he tells us, even through prophecy, the things that he's going to do for us. And when those things happen, it is like they are new. Look at how in Haggai 2, verse 9, he tells them that, you know, the, 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 the latter temple is going to be more glorious than the former. They really did not understand what he meant by that until, you know, Jesus stepped in human flesh, crisscrossing the temple from one corner to another and from that corner to another corner. He filled the temple with his physical presence. He was there physically. And I want to tell you, beloved, 
The Lord is in this place. He has come for us. Amen. Um, I'll invite Shepherdess Lulu Lovu. Please come forward to offer a word of prayer. She was sitting somewhere there. Oh, she's here. Oh, and so dear Jesus, here we are saying, What a mighty God to save. Oh. Thank you, dear God. And we, with unveiled faces, Beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, you are being changed from glory to glory to glory, even as unto your image. Rivers in the desert, indeed, oh God. So, so and as we shall be going back tomorrow, we'll be singing, redeemed, how I love to proclaim it, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Church who fed, going to church who fed, yes. So that and today we can say the cleansing flood. I see, I see. Ah, I cringe, and now he cleanseth me. Ah, Gosiam, Elocas, Elapala, Lemnamlezuen, Sialbona, and Sanj, oh, heaven, Father. Utetega Wuchet, go up. Utetega Wuchet, go to Tetega Wuchu. It's so painful to see. An honorable woman, a gracious, graceful woman like Mrs. Kent, going naked before us. Oh, heaven, Father, we cannot even imagine how she must have felt seeing that girl and wondering, where did I go wrong? Having come from the pulpit to go into the street and see such an effect, we are a failure as a mother. Oh, Heavenly Father, we don't know what it takes for a woman to come here and be naked and say, I failed at marriage. I could not keep a husband. But Heavenly Father, here we are. Because we are not going to be able to get up. We are not going to be able to get Thank you for the testimony, Mrs. Kenji. Oh, heaven, Father, thank you for the testimony that is kind. Thank you for the testimony that is kind. Because today a mother knows that my children are on their way. They are coming back. Because a woman who lost a husband knows today that I can let him go. I can let him go. And I can even pray for the one first. Amen. Today, I can say even she is a daughter of the mighty God. And salvation is also needed in her house. Thank you for releasing us from the crisis. Thank you that you're calling us to forget the former things. Because today you are doing a new thing. Because we are stuck in the former things, we can't even behold the beauty of today. Ah, salvation has come today. We are going out. We are beautiful. We are fresh. We are walking tall. Because thank you, dear Jesus. Oh, thank you. Oh, Chico is now in the land joining Bobusana Langaka. Ah, what shall we render unto you, oh God, for this love? It is not enough. You don't go down to the Veluta Tina, single Nigel. Oh, we are even bringing ourselves is still such a futile exercise because this is a John Connachik. John Connors is so oh I'm seeing a massava my nigga nigga ma atalala and to again jo I see on to what he no but I wait a messing up nigga yon. Says it is all so tada china chico who slung is this tada china chico to slung is this so that you can display your beauty, you can display your glory, so that when we go back, we won't have to say a thing, but they'll look at us and they'll say, surely Abba. You will have a Sanjaka Silvan Gabo Abba Cosiam Abba Vlula Umlam and Tango 
thank you, we love you, we honor you, we cherish you, we glorify you, you are, you are everything, you are the lily of the valley, the rose of Sharon. Ah, dear God, oh, we are magnifying you, we are exalting your holy name in this place because you are the God who saves, the God who heals. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Amen, amen. I need not say more. I think she has just done it for this sermon. Thank you so much, Pastor Kitendi. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. Uh, for the announcements, uh, may I, uh, we are kindly asking all the prayer pen team and the coordinators to go out and meet Pastor Mafura Malakalaka right now. As I'm speaking, the coordinators, or the women's ministry coordinators, and the prayer pen team. Secondly, Sister Refilwe, you are here. We do not know your surname, but you have a parcel that came from Sekunda, from the Maganos. And Sister Zoliswa Kabasi has got your parcel. So I don't know how you'll identify each other. Maybe she'll wait by the door. Um, she has, so please collect your parcel. We also want to let you know that amongst us, we've got um, Sister Jason from Golden West. Uh, we are told that she lost her grandchild on Thursday, but she's here with us today. May you please stand if you're around, uh, ma'am, Sister Jason. Oh, there she is. Um, ma'am, condolences to your family. Let us continue to also pray for her. She lost her grandchild on Thursday, but she made it to the retreat. Uh, may God be with you. There is a word for you that the Lord wants to, you to hear. Amen. And then, um, like we said yesterday, breakfast, lunch will be at Serengeti. And uh, yesterday we asked the direction to Serengeti. So we've done it easier today. You'll find Maria. She's waiting for us. There she is. She's waving at the door. Yeah, she's ready to take people to Serengeti. But I'm told it's not also not very far from, from um, Clover Screen. It's behind Clover Screen. So as you go out, you can just turn left and you'll find it there. But Maria is here for those that want to go there. That's where breakfast is served. It is, they started saving from 6 a.m., They'll finish at 10.30, but we are hoping that by then we are all done because we are starting our next program at 9. And let me also let you know, for every meal you have, you are allowed one soft drink. It's paid for. But if you order the next, then it's, you will pay for it. So for every meal you get, you are allowed to have one uh, soft drink. Um, yeah, I'm getting to the one that I, 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 I know the Lord will speak to us. Uh, we want to thank God for this retreat. This retreat was planned many, quite, I mean, almost like two years ago. And we want to thank God. And God in his wisdom has brought us. And I think we have no doubt that the Lord is here. He's showing us in every service that he's present. But we all know that as something is planned, the devil always finds a way in. And just comes in and comes in. But I want to say, where he has come in, it's not a place where I, it bothers me. Personally, I don't know if it will bother you, but it will not bother me. Not because I'm behind the organizing team. Even if I was not, it would not bother me. But I don't know how you take it. So for our retreat packs, you know the issue of packs. Retreat packs are always... So after breakfast, or not even after breakfast, as you live here, it de depends on how you want to do it. You can go for breakfast first, or you can go to Wonder Boom. There's a room called Wonder Boom. If you go out of this place, as you are going to the main reception, uh, you know, there's that garden. You walk, um, there's a garden this side and this side. You see, look on your left, you see a place called Wonder Boom. That's where you go to collect your, the contents that we are talking about. Um, Pastor Tati, I think she's already there with the team. So you go there, you show your wristbands. I'm told, now I'm going to mix up on the colors of the wristbands. I think it's the white and the black that are getting the packs. Uh, the, the purple, you are not, if you are wearing purple, I'm also wearing purple, so I'm not getting the pack. So if you are wearing purple, you are not getting uh, the pack. But if you are black and, and white, 
please go there. Or you can do it after breakfast. So decide how you want to do it. So let's not all go to Wonder Boom. Some can go to breakfast. So decide. When you see there's lots of people at Wonder Boom, go at breakfast. So that when those ones are cleared, you also come in and get your retreat packs. So that's, that's what the devil has done to us. And I don't think that should steal our joy. I mean, it's just a bag, which will come later. That shouldn't steal our joy. The Lord is here. We want to thank the Lord for that. So we are going to leave now, and let's meet again at 9 o'clock. We are starting things on time, so let's try to be on time. Thank you all, and may God bless you. Amen.